Good morning, everyone, and welcome. This is your teacher, Mr. Gagan Singh. And today, we are going to study about the origin of life. In biology, we study living things and living organisms. But this question has been in the minds of people, in the minds of great philosophers and scientists, wonder that how did life came into existence. But first of all, we need to understand that what is life? What is life? We all know that something or the other about life, anything which lives, breathes, eats foods, digests, and does all the metabolic activities in the body and we produce. There can be n number of terms. There are so many terms that are given by scientists, philosophers, and people like us also about life. What is life? And when we wonder about this question, there are so many things that we can learn. Because when we think of something, we think how it came into existence, then we start to wonder and perform experiments. And this same thing happens with different biologists. In past history, people have been wondering and they have given different explanations about life, the origin of life as our chapter deals with origin of life itself. Universe and origin of solar system. And there should be a question mark on that. Because what do we know about universe? We know nothing. Now, also, despite of having all the technological advancements and everything, we only know about 0.00001%. Because even our Earth is like a speck of dust in comparison with different billions and millions of stars and planets out there. So, universe and life, the origin of solar system came into existence by itself or by a supernatural being. This is what we are going to study today. There were different theories that were given, like the origin of life on Earth, because before we study about the universe, we concluded that when we are present in this universe, when we are a part of the universe, then if we can study about Earth, how life came here, then it might be an explanation that how all the universe came into existence. People have been given uh, different theories, the first and the foremost and the most widely accepted is the Big Bang Theory that in the beginning of this creation of this universe there was a huge blast and different gases combined and started to form, elements started to form and soon after the electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic energy everything came and later on the universe expanded and now we exist today. But what does it say about Earth? For Earth there is a theory which is called the theory of special creation. The theory of special creation. And this theory deals with the supernatural powers that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, as the Bible says. That in the beginning, a God formed the earth by its sweat or its own core. So people believe the different theories and this theory of special creation says and talks about a supernatural being or the God. As Bible and different other religions describes it as that first man and women, Adam and Eve, was born 
by the hand of God and everything was created by God and this is how this theory explains the theory of special creation. Next, when we move to the theory of spontaneous generation, it means that it came by abiogenesis, which is also known as the theory of abiogenesis and autogenesis. This theory, this theory of spontaneous generation, it means all the things came spontaneously by themselves. No one created them and everything came from non living thing. Like Greek philosophers have explained about this theory that before there was nothing, only inorganic particles were there and everything came from there. And this is the theory of abiogenesis. That without the living form, without any sort of entity, everything came from rock. Next theory is the theory of biogenesis. Abiogenesis is without life. Biogenesis is that everything came from life. The life was there and everything came from there. Because scientists like Francisco Reni, Louis Pasteur and Abe Lazaro explained it and they performed experiments. Because when people started to believe in spontaneous generation and abiogenesis, they did not. And they performed a different experiments that life has to come from life because it cannot come from a non-living thing. So, they performed experiments like Francisco Reddy, he took three different jars. Jar A, Jar B and Jar C. In first jar, and first what he did, he boiled a fish and freed it from all life and then he put the fish in three different jars. In first jar, he opened the lid, kept it open. Second, he put a muslin cloth and in the third jar, he put a parchment paper. But later on, after a few days, he found out that in the jar which was uncovered, there were mangoes and it started to rot. In second jar, there was no mangoes. In third jar as well, there was nothing. So he concluded that life cannot come from nothing because he put even the fish, mangoes did not appear, but when he put the cloth and the paper, it stopped the flow of organisms which traveled through the air and there was no Spoilage. Louis Pasteur, however, conducted that same type of experiments in which he explained by putting a flask with S-shaped or inverted S-shaped flask and he boiled the nutrients and he told about that life only originates from life itself, not from anything because that bottleneck stop the organism from coming in and later on a Lazaro also did the same by putting a glass, boiling it and the neck was covered, there was nothing, no space to uh, for the organism to get in but when he broke the neck, the organism started to grow, there were maggots, there were, there were spoilage. So, they explain that life does not originate spontaneously. It cannot originate spontaneously by abiogenesis or autogenesis. But it originates from life itself. Now we come down to the biochemical theories of life. Biochemical theories of life that it explains, it was explained by Operian and Holden in the book called Origin of Life. So there were many steps from one to eight steps and they have explained in it and we performed an experiment where he took two electrodes and he gases combined them and he put them in a, a flask with heat and temperature and converting uh, their internal environment by series of electrodes and electric 
current, you can do that. There were various compounds that were formed. So he said that the life can exist if the favorable conditions were given. So it was concluded that when Earth was there, the origin of Earth, there were in the beginning there was nothing, nothing at all, only gases and a huge pressure, temperature was present on Earth. And when sun was shining on the clouds of different gases, then there were some autocatalytic reactions that were there, which started a new series of reactions and those reactions from their organic and inorganic compounds presumably came by biochemical reactions. And later on, the origin of colloids started and individually there was a mixture of organic and inorganic molecules that behaved like an organism and soon there were eukaryotes and singular cell organisms that came into existence. And later on, all these things are explained in the theory of evolution. We know that the theory of evolution tells us that because it was explained in the same theories that were given by Oparian and Haldane in the biochemical theories, the theory of evolution supports that because according to the theory of evolution, the life came from nothing because first there was a big bang, clouds formed and the universe expanded, gravitational pull pulled everything and formed planet, solar system and in those solar system the environment conditions were formed because of the huge pressure and the first rain started and in the sea animals started to originate and from the sea the animals came on to land and from all those creatures in five to six billions and millions of years the life started and one we moved from one organistic level to the other and sooner and later the human came from the primates and they started to develop skills, started to develop cognitive powers and we started to behave in a different way and now look at us, in 100 to 100 years we have accomplished a lot of things. We have gone to space, onto moon, Mars, and we are on to Neptune. We are sending a rover, and all these things we have done in these ages. So life changes every time. It changes, and you and I have might have different theories about it, but science tells us that life came from a series of complex reactions and events that took place but when finally uh, the animals and plants when they habituated in different environment understood it and then later on started to live accordingly and now we can call this modern age where we can explain how life came and today as we are writing about this chapter, I want all of you to read more and more and study about it. You can watch different videos online. But basically this is for class 12. So I would like you to suggest that you go through your syllabus and read the chapter carefully. And I also hope that this video, today's session of this class, would have been useful for us. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day and all the best.